a very good morning and welcome back to the course of microwave engineering if you remember in our previous lecture we have completed the theoretical study of all the passive waveguide junction based devices so the different types of passive waveguide based junction devices such as attenuators phase shifters then the multiport devices such as uh, h plane t e plane t four port devices such as the magic t hybrid ring directional coupler and the special type of a material which are constructed using a ferrite material the examples are isolator circulator and gyrator and simple power divider network using resistive network we completed so more or less uh, all the parts in module number 2 are covered now today's lecture we will devote to solve some of the numerical problems based on module number 2 we know that in module number 2 we started with a derivation of modal analysis for the given types of a waveguide rectangular and circular waveguide now as this particular chapter involves so many different types of devices mostly we do expect certain numerical problems based on these devices okay so today what we do is we will solve a couple of sample examples numerical example based on the different types of a devices and these examples uh, could be asked in the examination and they are numerical questions okay so let us solve some of the numerical problems in this particular lecture based on the devices we study so here a problem statement is in front of you okay so here a problem statement is given so first of all i will read out this problem statement the problem statement is a rectangular waveguide is given to us with a dimension of a ratio a by b is equal to 2 so we have been given with a dimension of the rectangular waveguide and the ratio is mentioned over here it is equal to a by b is equal to 2 and the broader dimension is mentioned it is around 5.817 cm and relative permeability is equal to 1 with relative permittive is equal to 2.5 assuming dominant mode of a propagation calculate the guide wavelength and the characteristic impedance at 3 gigahertz so this particular example is typically based on a rectangular waveguide so first of all in the solution we need to write the given things so i will write a solution over here first of all write what are the things given so actually how the rectangular waveguide look like for example i will draw over here this is a rectangular waveguide i am drawing the cross section how it look likes okay we know that the rectangular waveguide is infinite in this particular direction that is a z okay so the broader dimension of this particular waveguide we used to call it as a uh, width right so this dimension we call it as a width and this width is specified by small letter a and similarly the height of the rectangular waveguide is denoted by smaller dimension and here it is denoted by b so we have given the ratio a upon b so this ratio is given is equal to 2 okay and also what is the given the broader dimension that is the width is given right so the width is 5.817 cm relative permeability is given okay so relative permeability so that is the quantity which specifies the medium okay so relative permeability that is mu r is given is equal to 1 and relative permittivity is also given so that is epsilon r and it is equal to 2.5 okay so assuming dominant mode of a propagation so here it is told to us that assume dominant propagation mode right dominant propagation mode is assumed we already know what is the dominant propagation mode in the case of a rectangular waveguide 
we know that dominant propagation mode in rectangular waveguide is TE10, okay, which is the smallest possible mode below which the wave cannot propagate. So that we already know, okay. So here TE10 is the dominant mode for rectangular waveguide because its cutoff frequency is the smallest among all the different types of a mode and here what is the dominant mode indicate it is a temn okay so here the indices m is equal to 1 and n is equal to 0 right so here what we are asked we are asked to calculate the guide wavelength okay and the characteristic impedance at operating frequency so the operating frequency is given f is equal to how much it is 3 gigahertz so write down 3 gigahertz so all this is the given information so what we did we first wrote all the given information and then we will see a particular equation to calculate the guide wavelength okay so the cutoff wavelength we need to calculate first so first of all i will calculate the cutoff wavelength so the formula to calculate cutoff wavelength in a rectangular waveguide is 1 upon lambda c square how it is given it is given as m upon 2a whole square right plus n upon 2b whole square okay so you, we can put the values over here so m is 1 right and 2 into a okay so a is given to us it is equal to 5.817 centimeter right so this whole bracket square okay plus n so n is already 0 so this term will become 0 so here we get a cutoff wavelength 1 upon lambda c square is equal to 1 divided by 2 multiplied by 5.817 centimeter we can convert this into meters by multiplying with 10 to minus 2 and whole bracket square now we solve this particular equation for the cutoff wavelength okay so when we solve this equation for the cutoff wavelength we will get the equation lambda c is equal to approximately 0.116 meter so if you calculate you will get a value near about same okay now once you know the cutoff wavelength we can calculate the guide wavelength now so here i will write therefore guide wavelength so what is the formula to calculate guide wavelength in the case of rectangular waveguide it is given as lambda g is equal to lambda divided by square root of mu r epsilon r minus lambda by lambda c okay where lambda c is the cutoff wavelength and what is lambda now here lambda is equal to c by f where c is a constant 3 into 10 raised to 8 propagation and f what is the operating frequency given it is a 3 gigahertz right so it will be 1 upon 10 hertz. okay so we know the value of lambda we know the values of mu r and epsilon r those are specified and we also calculated the value of lambda c okay so the guide wavelength is then given by lambda is 1 upon 10 right divided by square root of now mu r is 1 what is the relative permittivity relative permittivity is 2.5 right minus what is the lambda lambda is again 1 by 10 divided by cutoff frequency 0 0.116 whole bracket square so if you simplify this particular equation we will get guide wavelength lambda g is equal to approximately 0 0.075 meters right now we have calculated the guide wavelength okay and next what we are asked to calculate we are also asked to calculate the characteristic impedance so we need to write down the formula to calculate the characteristic impedance of the wave 
in the rectangular view guide so here i will write that formula characteristic impedance of the wave characteristic impedance of the wave so how it is given what is the formula to calculate the characteristic impedance of the wave the characteristic impedance is given by z0 which is given in the case of a rectangular wave guide pi by 2 multiplied by b by a okay and multiplied by impedance of transverse electric mode okay so this can be simplified as 377 right multiplied by ratio of b by a okay square root of epsilon sorry square root of mu r square root of mu r divided by epsilon r into lambda g upon lambda okay so the characteristic impedance z0 of the wave we will get 377 so you need to remember this formula so b by a so b by a is 1 by 2 right so mu r is 1 and epsilon r is how much it is 2.5 right multiplied by guide wavelength that is 0 0.075 divided by lambda and here we got the lambda is 1 by 10 okay so if you simplify this and calculate the value of z0 z0 of the wave characteristic impedance of the wave we are getting around 89.41 ohm okay so these are the answers for the question so here if you notice the cutoff wavelength and the guide wavelength so the cutoff wavelength is given with 0.116 and the guide wavelength is lesser than the cutoff wavelength right so the guide wavelength is going to dependent on the material with which the wave guide is constructed okay so this is a typical solution to the parameters which are asked in the problem number one okay so similarly we will proceed to solve another problem over here now the problem over here given in the statement over here right so first of all i will statement the statement is determine the cutoff wavelength and the wave impedance in the case of a rectangular wave guide. So here two things are asked cutoff wavelength and wave impedance in the case of a rectangular wave guide. Again we are dealing with a rectangular wave guide. The dimension of the wave guide is given the dimension is 5 cm by 2 cm. That means width is 5 cm and height is 2 cm operating mode of the rectangular wave guide is tm11 please remember and the operating frequency is given as 9 gigahertz so first of all we will write a solution here the given data first of all we need to write so the given data is width of rectangular wave guide always remember the broader value or broader dimension is a width rectangular wave guide Okay, so this W is indicating the broader dimension of the wave guide that is A, it is given is equal to 5 cm. Similarly, height of the rectangular wave guide that is given I will write here. What is the height value given? the height is indicated as h and it is denoted by b in our dimension it is 2 cm right propagating mode of the rectangular wave guide now it is not a dominant mode please remember because it is operating in tm mode tm11 with m is equal to 1 and n is equal to 1 okay and the next is operating frequency is given i will write operating frequency is equal to f it is given as a 9 gigahertz okay 
so what we are asked to calculate we are asked to calculate what is the cutoff wavelength and what is the wave impedance right so we may, will make use of the same equation where uh, in example one we saw this particular equation i denote over here so this particular same equation we are going to make use okay so here let us make use of the same equation so cutoff wavelength how it is given the equation is 1 upon lambda c square cutoff wavelength square is equal to m by 2a whole square plus n upon 2b whole square okay now you can place the values as we know that m and n are non-zero values so here m is equal to 1 and 2 times a a is a 5 centimeter i will convert that into meters 10 is to 2 whole bracket square plus n n is again 1 divided by 2 into b 2 into 10 is to minus 2 right whole bracket square now you simplify this term and calculate the lambda c okay so you can calculate with this right and here how we can calculate the lambda lambda is given by c by f so c is a constant 3 into 10 is to 8 meter per second divided by f so f is a 9 gigahertz okay so it is 1 divided by 3 into 10 so 1 by 30 meters okay so we know that lambda c we know the value of operating frequency so we can calculate the wave impedance now okay so what is the equation of wave impedance now the equation of the wave impedance we will use the same formula over here so the wave impedance here i will write wave impedance how it is given I will write that formula again Z0 is equal to the same 377 377 multiplied by ratio of B to A right multiplied by square root of mu, epsilon mu R upon epsilon R right multiplied by the last term is lambda G upon lambda lambda G upon lambda okay so here when you calculate cutoff wavelength the cutoff wavelength approximately you will get 0 0.037 meters approximately when you solve this particular equation right so the wave impedance then z0 is equal to 377 multiplied by b by a so b is a 2 centimeter divided by a means 5 centimeter okay mu r and epsilon r now here what is the value of mu r and epsilon r okay so here we assume that mu r and epsilon r values are not specified over here okay so here we assume that mu r is equal to 1 and epsilon r is also equal to 1 okay so here mu r and epsilon they are 1 so this square root will always evaluate to 1 so guide wavelength okay so what is the guide wavelength then how the guide wavelength is calculated we don't know the guide wavelength so first of all you need to calculate the guide wavelength so guide wavelength we require make use of the same equation guide wavelength is equal to lambda divided by so lambda divided by square root of mu r epsilon r minus the equation is lambda upon lambda c whole square lambda upon lambda c whole square now you can put these values and calculate the characteristic impedance okay and you will find that this particular value of wave impedance when you substitute all this value approximately 833.6 ohm you are going to get approximately okay so this is the wave impedance in tm11 mode for the given rectangular wave guide okay so these are the simple numerical examples which are based on rectangular waveguide and these could be asked in the examination. So we proceed for the 
see uh, i request you people to perform the intermediate calculation some of the calculation i will be directly writing okay so it is your job to perform the intermediate calculation and validate your answers right so we'll quickly move to the third example now now the third example is i will read it out first a lossless dielectric waveguide for the s band radar has inside dimension of a is equal to 7.214 cm and b is equal to 3.404 cm for the tm11 wave operating at frequency which is 1.1 times that of the cutoff frequency right so operating frequency here is not directly given so but it is specified that operating frequency is 1.1 times of the cutoff frequency so calculate the critical wave number cutoff frequency operating frequency propagation constant cutoff wavelength operating wavelength guide wavelength phase velocity and wave impedance so lot many data is asked over here let us evaluate one by one so first of all again as a common practice we will write the given data first which will make us easy to calculate the different parameters okay so first of all the dielectric material is air dielectric material is given is air so for air epsilon r is 1 and by default the permeability is 1 okay so the dimension of this rectangular waveguide is given the small the widest dimension that is the width indicated as a small a it is given in centimeter 7.214 centimeter the height of the waveguide is also mentioned here that is indicated with a small b so this is given 3.404 centimeter right operating mode is specified okay so what is the operating mode here for the rectangular waveguide the operating mode is tm11 mode okay so tm11 means it will specify the suffixes m is equal to 1 and n is equal to 1 both okay so here the relationship between operating frequency and cutoff frequency is given so what is the relationship operating frequency i will write here operating frequency is equal to 1.1 times cutoff frequency this relationship is given so anyhow if you are able to find out cutoff frequency you can calculate the operating frequency by using this relationship okay then what is asked it is asked to calculate critical wave number cutoff frequency and from that we can find operating frequency using this relation right then propagation constant gamma cutoff wavelength that is lambda c operating wavelength that is lambda guide wavelength that is lambda g phase velocity and wave impedance okay so one by one let us start calculating the parameters so here first of all we will calculate cutoff frequency so for the cutoff frequency for the rectangular waveguide operating in tm11 mode is given with this particular equation general equation 1 divided by 2 under root mu epsilon okay into square root of what is the formula m by a i have taken pi outside so i am cancelled the pi parameter outside plus n by b whole square so use this particular equation so here mu and epsilon both are one so this will get reduced to one by two into the square root of so m is one right so what is a a is given 7.214 centimeter you convert this into meter this bracket is square plus n n is again one divided by b so b is 3.404 centimeter so convert this into meter take the whole square okay so cutoff frequency if you evaluate this particular equation with your scientific calculator around one four point eight six gigahertz around i will get the value four point eight six okay so we know the cutoff frequency therefore operating frequency 
from the earlier given relationship therefore operating frequency i will write here therefore operating frequency i will denote this operating frequency is equal to f how it is given it is given 1.1 times cutoff frequency that is fc so here 1.1 multiplied by the cutoff frequency that is 4.86 gigahertz so when you calculate this around 5.346 gigahertz the answer you will get the operating frequency okay so next is asked to calculate the wave number okay so the wave number critical wave number critical wave number how the formula is given the wave number is given as a capital k which is equal to omega under root mu into epsilon mu into epsilon is already one okay so mu into epsilon you can convert that so omega is equal to 2 into pi into operating frequency f so mu over here is mu 0 into mu r okay and epsilon is epsilon 0 epsilon r okay so here mu 0 is equal to 1 sorry this uh, mu r rather relative permeability so here mu r is 1 and epsilon r is 1 okay and mu 0 is a constant 4 pi into 10 raise to minus 7 Henry per meter okay and epsilon naught epsilon naught 8.854 into 10 raise to minus 12 farad per meter constant okay so we can substitute these values over here and substitute f is 3 4 6 therefore critical wave number we will get k is equal to 112 approximately you should get this value after substitution okay so operating wavelength now okay so next is a operating wavelength so how the operating wavelength is given operating wavelength lambda is equal to c by f c is again a constant 3 into 10 raise to 8 and f is a operating frequency operating frequency is 5.346 gigahertz okay you substitute and you calculate this value operating wavelength is around 0 0.056 meter you will get the value okay so once you know the operating wavelength you can calculate the cutoff wavelength so what is the formula to calculate cutoff wavelength i will write here cutoff wavelength right so how it is given cutoff wavelength lambda c is equal to what is the formula it is given as 1 upon lambda c square is equal to m divided by 2a whole square plus n divided by 2b whole square the same formula we are using therefore 1 upon lambda c square you substitute the value m is 1 into 2a what is the value of a given over here the a value is 7.214 centimeter whole square plus n n is again 1 2 multiplied by b now what is the value of b the value of b is 3.404 centimeter okay whole square okay so if you substitute all these values and if you calculate the cutoff wavelength so the cutoff wavelength we will get the value lambda c is equal to 0 0.0615 meter you can cross verify you can check calculate your own and verify this answer okay then guide wavelength so how the guide wavelength is given so i'll write here guide wavelength how it is given lambda g is equal to write down the equation equation is lambda divided by square root of mu epsilon r minus lambda upon lambda c whole square now we already know what is a lambda lambda we have got 0 0.056 substitute here 
divided by square root of now it is 1 okay so minus 0 0.056 divided by cutoff wavelength 0 0.0615 whole square so if we calculate the guide wavelength the guide wavelength you will get approximately the value is equal to 0 0.135 meters guide wavelength okay so once you have calculated the guide wavelength the phase velocity can be given as so here i will write the formula phase velocity of the wave phase velocity of the wave so what is the formula to calculate the phase velocity phase velocity is generated by vp of the wave so the formula is c divided by square root of 1 minus lambda upon lambda c whole square now we substitute the value what is the c c is 3 into 10 raise to 8 meter per second divided by 1 minus lambda so what is the lambda we have got the value of lambda is 0 0.056 divided by lambda c is 0 0.0615 whole square okay so if you calculate this we will get the phase velocity around 7.25 into 10 raise to 8 meter per second okay so this value of phase velocity that we are going to get okay and finally here the propagation constant so how the propagation constant is given i will write here the propagation constant is denoted by letter gamma okay so what is the formula propagation constant you should know the wave number critical wave number k square square root of minus m pi by a whole square minus n pi by b whole square now you substitute the value what is the value of critical wave number we calculated it is equal to 112 so put the value under the square root 112 minus m is 1 that is pi divided by a a is how much the a is 7.214 centimeter 7.214 everything you place in terms of a meter whole square right minus n is again 1 then divided by b what is the value of b 3.404 centimeter 3.404 centimeter means 10 to minus 2 okay so we calculate propagation constant gamma over here when you solve this particular equation 46.16 per meter we get please remember propagation constant is measured per meter the unit is per meter please remember okay and finally the wave impedance so how the wave impedance is given again we rewrite the formula to calculate the wave impedance it is given as a z o you can calculate so eta divided by directly you can use this formula eta divided by 1 minus lambda upon lambda c square so where eta is an intrinsic impedance of the free space which is equal to 377 ohm directly you can take divided by 1 minus lambda upon lambda c square 0 0.056 divided by 0 0.0615 whole square now you solve this particular equation and calculate the value of wave impedance which we get nearly 912 ohm if you simplify okay and this completes the solution for this problem statement okay so I hope uh, you understood uh, how to uh, calculate the parameter based on the simple uh, equations and uh, specified data. Okay. So we go ahead now for the fourth example. So for the fourth example, we will first of all, we will read the statement for the fourth assignment or the fourth problem statement. Okay. okay so what is the problem statement here 
a circular cylindrical air filled cavity is given okay so a circular air filled cylindrical cavity with 3 cm radius and 6 cm length is excited in te11 mode if the bandwidth is 5 megahertz then it is asked to calculate resonating frequency and quality factor for this resonator so here a cylindrical resonator circuit is asked so what is a cylindrical resonator it is a circular waveguide right but which is closed at one particular end so this is a circular waveguide only but this circular waveguide is closed at the other two ends so the radius is 3 centimeter so the radius is 3 centimeter okay and the length of this particular cavity so that means here the height of this particular cavity i will denote as h okay so the height of this cavity is 6 centimeter now this cavity is excited in te11 mode te11 mode means m is equal to 1 and n is equal to 1 okay so the bandwidth of the operation so this we are talking about the solution right so the bandwidth how much is the bandwidth bandwidth is given is equal to 5 megahertz okay and it is asked us to calculate what is the resonating frequency and what is the quality factor of this cylindrical cavity resonator so actually this is a circular waveguide and this circular waveguide is truncated at the end it has made finite in the length so that's why the circular waveguide will get converted into cavity resonator and here we are asked to calculate what is the resonating frequency and what is the quality factor of this resonator circuit okay so here a is the radius of this cavity right and it is given it is equal to 3 centimeter okay the length we denote by d over here the length of this particular cavity we denote instead of h we will denote by d so d is height or distance of that particular cavity it is given is equal to 6 centimeter bandwidth is 5 megahertz okay so for a resonator so in which mode it is operating it is operating in te11 mode now we know that in the case of resonator the suffixes are indicated with three different letters m n and p so here we will denote te m and p okay so here m is equal to clearly it is one n is equal to 1 and here p is equal to q is equal to it is not given we will take equal to 1 okay so for m is equal to 1 n is equal to 1 and p or q is equal to 1 third suffix because we are truncating the waveguide in the third direction in order to make it as a uh, resonator for this what we get is we get the vessel function for the circular waveguide so this vessel function we will call it as a p dash we directly take it from the table for the te mode and we find that it is 8 4 1 constant vessel function okay now we will make use of these given data in order to calculate the resonating frequency of the resonator so resonating frequency i will write here resonating frequency resonating frequency of what resonating frequency of kvt resonator resonating frequency of kvt resonator so how it is given so fr the formula is 1 upon 2 pi under root mu epsilon okay p dash divided by a whole square plus q pi by d for the other dimension whole square and entire this thing is under square root so we substitute 
so the resonating frequency fr is equal to 1 upon 2 pi okay so 2 pi it is uh, a circular air field cavity okay so for circular air field cavity mu and epsilon so mu 0 mu r epsilon 0 epsilon r mu and epsilon you can write in this way so p dash n p the Bessel function 1.841 divided by a a is a radius okay a is a radius and the radius is 3 centimeter 3 into 10 is to 2 centimeter okay and q is already 1 so i will take it as a pi divided by d so d is given 6 into 10 is to minus 2 whole square okay and take this under square root the complete thing okay so here mu 0 is a constant 4 pi into 10 is to minus 7 henry per meter mu r is 1 epsilon 0 is 8.854 into 10 raised to minus 12 farad per meter that is again a constant and epsilon r as it is air take it is equal to 1 so when we substitute all these values over here we will get the resonating frequency the resonating frequency is 3.851 gigahertz okay and how the quality factor is given then so the quality factor the equation is quality factor is equal to given as a q is equal to the resonating frequency divided by bandwidth once you have found out the resonating frequency the quality factor is given so resonating frequency is 3.851 gigahertz divided by bandwidth divided by bandwidth is 5 megahertz 5 into 10 is to 6 okay so what is the quality factor then if you evaluate this one you will get a quality factor 770.2 so we notice that the quality factor of a resonator circuit is very high so if you take any example of a cavity resonator and if you evaluate the quality factor of a resonator it always found to be a very high value okay so this completes this particular example now let us go ahead with the next example okay next example i will read out this example for you a rectangular cavity resonator has a dimension of a is given that is a broader dimension 4 cm and b is given that is a smaller dimension that is 2 cm and the length of this cavity given that is 16 centimeter then it is asked to calculate the resonating frequency of the dominant mode of this cavity this cavity is filled with air find the smallest possible size of the cavity and the modes which will resonate this cavity at 4 gigahertz okay so let us start developing a solution for this first of all you write the given data so a cavity resonator please remember i will draw a cavity resonator so cavity resonator it is in the form of a rectangular waveguide but this rectangular waveguide is truncated at the other end in this way okay so this dimension is a broader dimension and this is given as a four centimeter the height of this cavity resonator made up of rectangular waveguide is given as a two centimeter that is b and the depth of this resonator is also fixed now here it is mentioned the depth is equal to 16 centimeter okay then it is asked to calculate what could be the resonating frequency in the dominant mode for this cavity when it is filled with air dielectric material so inside this cavity we are going to fill this cavity with air dielectric okay so that means it is a empty waveguide resonator okay so first of all let us write so what is given a a is given as a width right a is a width it is equal to 4 centimeter then b is given b is given in the what is b first of all b is the height right b is the height of the cavity it is given as a 2 centimeter 
and finally d is a depth or you can also call it as a length of that cavity and this is equal to 16 centimeter what it is asked to calculate the resonating frequency for dominant mode okay so here we note that the depth of the cavity resonator is greater than the width which is greater than the height okay so here it is simply 16 centimeter depth is greater than 4 centimeter width which is greater than 2 centimeter of height okay so here the dominant mode we can decide for the waveguide resonator so the dominant mode is te okay and here the dominant mode for this particular relationship between the depth the width and the height is te101 okay so width m is equal to 1 n is equal to 0 and p is equal to 1 please remember okay so then we will use the simple equation to calculate the resonating frequency please remember that if this ratio or this relationship that waveguide resonator is going to hold then the dominant mode of the waveguide cavity resonator is te mode and if this particular relation holds true that is the depth is greater than width which is greater than the height then the dominant mode of the cavity resonator is always te101 mode okay so we are m n and p we will get 1 0 and 1 so we will use this formula so the formula for resonating frequency or resonant frequency you can call it as either way so the resonance frequency is given as what is the formula 1 upon 2 pi under root mu epsilon again please remember mu is equal to mu 0 into mu r similarly epsilon is equal to epsilon 0 epsilon r square root of right m pi by a whole square plus n pi by b whole square plus p pi by d whole square now we replace these values over here the resonating frequency 1 upon 2 pi now here mu is mu 0 into mu r and epsilon is epsilon 0 into epsilon r okay so where epsilon r and mu r both values are 1 remember now inside this bracket square root of m is 1 pi by a a is 4 centimeter will convert that into meter okay so n is all anyway it is a zero right because if you substitute n is equal to zero the second term inside the square root becomes zero and p p is one pi by d d is 16 centimeter right whole bracket square so you simplify this particular equation the value of resonating frequency we are going to get around three point 865 gigahertz and this resonating frequency is for dominant mode te101 for the rectangular cavity resonator okay right so here what is asked find the smallest possible size of the cavity and the modes which resonates at 4 gigahertz okay so the resonating frequency is now so here I will write now if resonating frequency is given as a 4 gigahertz we already calculated resonating frequency in earlier case 8 3.865 gigahertz if the resonating frequency is 4 gigahertz okay then for dominant mode then for dominant mode so which is the dominant mode the dominant mode is same te101 so here we will make use of the same equation okay of the resonating frequency and we substitute 4 gigahertz into this equation and we will calculate this equation for the depth of the cavity resonator so we get d value by keeping other same 
around 10.7 centimeter so what we have done over here we utilize the same equation over here above to calculate the resonating frequency but the resonating frequency we substituted the value 4 gigahertz and the other value except d value and we calculated for d and we found that the d value we get around 10.7 centimeter okay so therefore in order to operate in order to operate cavity resonator in order to operate cavity resonator in dominant mode te101 mode okay a is same that is 4 cm b is again same that is 2 cm okay and if we want the resonating frequency to be 4 gigahertz then we should have d is equal to 10.7 centimeter okay and what is the relationship over here we can again give d is greater than a which is greater than b okay so the second question was same find the smallest possible size of the cavity so a is going to remain same b is going to remain same we need to find what is the dimension in terms of a depth in order to operate that cavity resonator at resonating frequency of 4 gigahertz and that we have calculated okay i hope you understood this particular example now let us go ahead with the another example okay so the next example that we are going to solve it is based on coupler circuit okay so let us go to the next example okay so this is a particular example of directional coupler now let us see what is given first of all i will read out the statement for you a 20 milliwatt signal is fed into port 2 of the lossless directional coupler who has a coupling coefficient of 20 db and the directivity of 50 db then find the power at all the output ports so first of all i will make a diagram in order to understand the working of this directional coupler so in solution first of all i will draw a rough diagram of a directional coupler so the directional coupler is a four port device right so let us say this is the directional coupler the symbolic representation okay and in this way let us say this is a port number one okay and this is a port number two this is a port number three and say this is a port number four it is a four port device okay so what is given a 20 milliwatt signal is fed into port number 2. So port number 2 over here is treated as an input port. So this port number 2 is an input port. And how much power is fed into this port? That is 20 milliwatt. Okay, 20 milliwatt power is fed into port 2. Okay, so when port 2 is treated as an input port, then the port which is directly in front of it is going to become a through port so which is the port which is directly in front of port 2 that is port number 1 so this particular port number 1 we call it as a through port let's remember how to decide a through port if you know the input port a port which is directly located in front of input port we call it as a through port okay and the remaining two ports are coupled port and isolated port okay so the port which is located just below the through port we normally call it as a coupled port where the coupling is take place so port number four is a coupled port and the last remaining port is a isolated port where the signal reaches very minimum so port number three is a isolated port now here we know that port number two is an input port number one is a through port where the maximum signal out of the 20 milliwatt is going to get propagated some portion of the input signal of 20 milliwatt will also get coupled to port number four 
so port number 4 is very important and this particular port is a coupled port where the coupling is taking place the sampling of the micro signal is taking place and anyway port number 3 is isolated and here we normally assume to get minimum power okay so here what is asked the given things are coupling coefficient is given so first of all i will write the coupling coefficient i will write coupling coefficient is given so this coupling coefficient capital c is given is equal to 20 db okay and the directivity is also given for this coupler the directivity of this coupler is denoted by capital letter d okay and the directivity is specified as a 50 db over here and the input power is given which is fed at port number 2 and that is 20 milliwatt and it is asked us to calculate all the power at the remaining port so if you go to the theory of the two hole directional coupler we saw the characteristic of the directional coupler the coupler has three main characteristics that is the coupling coefficient directivity and isolation so the coupling coefficient c is also given in terms of ratio of powers 10 log to the best 10 of okay input power pi divided by power coupled pc okay so here pi is the input power okay and pc is the coupled power okay so which is the input port here input port is a port 2 so i will write this as a port 2 power at port 2 and similarly which port is a coupled port over here the coupled port is port number 4 and the power over here i will denote by p4 okay so this is in db and similarly how the directivity is given in terms of the equation directivity d is written as 10 log to the best 10 of okay isolated coupled port power divided by the isolated port so this is the formula so what is pc pc is again a coupled port power so this power at coupled power is present at port number 4 i will denote it as a p4 right and p isolator that means the power which is getting delivered at the isolated port so i will write power at isolated port okay so here in the diagram the isolated port is a p3 right so here if i give the equation so the coupling if i substitute c is equal to 10 log to the best 10 of what is a pi pi is nothing but p2 divided by pc is nothing but a p4 okay so i will substitute the value p log to the best 10 okay so what is the value of p2 p2 is 20 milliwatt so here i will write 20 milliwatt divided by p4 that is not known to us okay on the right hand side what is the coupling coefficient that is coupling coefficient is 20 db okay so only the unknown in this particular equation is a p4 okay so we can evaluate by solving this particular equation so the p4 is nothing but the power at coupled port right so when you evaluate this particular simplify this equation what value we will get power at the coupled port is 0 0.2 milliwatt okay so similarly we will make use of the directivity equation directivity d is equal to 10 log to the best 10 of okay so power at the coupled port so the power at the coupled port is p4 divided by power at the isolated port okay so power at the isolated port is p3 okay so i will substitute this value 10 log to the best 10 of power at the coupled port is 0.2 milliwatt just we right now we have calculated divided by 
power at the isolated port that is unknown to us which we want to calculate and this is given is a directivity is equal to 50 db so if we simplify this particular equation we get power p3 at isolated port power at isolated port so this comes out to be p3 okay so around 2 into 10 raised to minus 9 watt or you can say 2 nano watt which is very very negligible 2 nano watt right so the power at coupled port we found the power at isolated port we found so what is the power at the through port okay so here port 2 is a input port so maximum what happens over here is we can write the equation as power at the input port is equal to power at the through port and power at the coupled port so here p1 plus p4 okay therefore p1 power at input port sorry power at through port power at through port how it is given then it is equal to p2 minus p4 p2 is 20 milliwatt right so 20 milliwatt minus p4 so p4 we have got power at coupled port minus 0.2 milliwatt so p1 at the through port we will get around 19.8 milliwatt so this is the power at through port okay so and p3 is 2 nanowatt it is an isolated port right similarly power at port 4 that is at coupled port it is 0.2 milliwatt okay so all the powers at all the remaining ports are now calculated power at the input port that is p2 that is 20 milliwatt power at the through port that is p1 19.8 milliwatt power at the coupled port that is p4 0.2 milliwatt and finally power at the isolated port that is denoted by p3 that is 2 nanowatt okay so this completes the evaluation of powers at all the remaining ports in the case of directional coupler example okay so finally we will come across the next example okay so this particular example we are going to design a resistive power divider network okay and this divider power divider network we want to design to implement the power division ratio in the specified format okay so the next example is design a wilkinson power divider network we already studied what is a wilkinson power divider circuit it consists of simply resistive arms in order to divide the given input power in the desired ratio okay design the wilkinson power divider network in order to obtain power division ratio of 2s to 3 with the source impedance whose impedance is 50 ohm okay so first of all we will write what is the given things in the solution so we'll write the solution first of all we will write power ratio so what is the power ratio power ratio or it is also known as a power division ratio so how we are going to divide the input power the power division has to take place in a proportion 2 is to 3 or you can write this as a 2 is to 3 so what do we mean by this let us say this is the power divider circuit this is power divider circuit this block represent power divider network or circuit if suppose some input power you are going to fade it okay and it has two outputs output 1 and output 2 so what i want is this power divider circuit should divide this power at the two output ports such that 
द पावर विच आई एम गोइंग टू रिसीव एट पोर्ट आउटपुट पोर्ट नंबर वन लेट एस से इट इज एक्स पावर एंड लेट एस से इट इज अ वाई पावर ओके सो इफ यू टेक द रेशियो ऑफ पावर्स सो रेशियो ऑफ पावर्स एट आउटपुट ओके सो एक्स बाई वाई और वाई बाई एक्स सो दिस रेशियो वी वॉन्ट टू गेट टू एस टू थ्री ओके सो इफ देर इज अ सर्टन इनपुट पावर द आउटपुट पावर एक्स इज इक्वल टू इनपुट पावर बाय टू एंड वाई आई शुड गेट इनपुट पावर बाय थ्री और सेकेंड चांस द एक्स शुड बी इनपुट पावर बाय थ्री एंड वाई आउटपुट पावर इज इनपुट पावर बाय टू सो एनी ऑफ दिस कॉम्बिनेशन आई वॉन्ट टू गेट so the meaning over here is whatever input power you give at the input of power divider network i want to divide that input power by 2 and by 3 at the output two ports okay so that when i take the ratio of output ports i will get the ratio of power division to be 2 is to 3 okay so this ratio is p2 by p3 so power at the output ports P two by P three, I will denote with this ratio, is equal to two by three. This I want, okay. And the source impedance is given fifty ohm. And it is asked to design the power divider circuit, Wilkinson power divider circuit. So we know the ratio of output powers that is two s to three. So that means we can write P two is equal to point sixty six times P three, right? now we will calculate the ratio k which we need k is given by p3 by p2 okay so p3 by p2 is square root p3 is 3 times p2 is 2 times output power so this out comes out to be 1.2247 okay so here how the wilkinson power divider circuit will look like i will draw it first it is a simple resistive circuit having one port and two output ports in this way okay so this is a port 1 okay this is a port 2 and this is a port 3 port 2 and port 3 are normally treated as output ports port 1 is treated as a input port in between port 2 and port 3 we have a resistive element this resistive element we denote later with r0 and here we want to calculate what is the impedance of this particular arm so this we call it as a arm 1 okay the impedance of arm 1 between port 1 and port 2 is denoted by zo2 similarly the impedance between port 1 and port 3 this particular arm 2 is denoted by zo3 okay so here we want to calculate what is the arm resistance of this divider network so here i will write the equation for that the resistance how to design resistance in arm 2 okay of power dividers so that is zo2 how it is given zo2 is given as z0 multiplied by square root of k into 1 plus k square okay so z0 is 50 okay so what is the value of k that is the ratio we have calculated 1.2247 multiplied by 1 plus 1 Four seven square, okay, and this we get around eighty seven point forty eight ohm, okay, and similarly resistance in arm three, and resistance in arm three, we denote it as Z O three. How it is given? Z O three is given as Z O. Multiplied by square root of one plus k square divided by k cube. Okay, 
so we substitute values over here square root of 1 plus k square 1.2247 whole square divided by k cube 1.2247 cube okay so when we evaluate this equation we will get it equal to 58.33 ohm approximately okay so here we need to also calculate we have calculated zo2 that is the arm resistance of second arm we have calculated the arm resistance into a third arm and we also need to calculate what should be the value of the resistance which is connected between port 2 and port 3 okay so how this is given so here resistance between arm 2 and arm 3 so the equation to calculate r0 that is r0 so it is given by z0 1 plus k square divided by k so k is a 50 ohm multiplied by 1 plus 1.2247 square divided by 1.2247 it is a simple resistive calculations so this comes out to be 102 ohm approximately okay so here if you implement this particular circuit okay so if you take this particular circuit and if you make the resistive arms such that the resistive arm of the second you maintain the resistance equal to 87.48 for the third arm you maintain the resistance around 59 ohm and place a resistor in between arm 2 and arm 3 whose value is approximately 100 ohm and whenever you give any input over here this input will get divided such that it will get divided by 2 at port 2 and it will get divided by 3 at port 3 and if you take the ratio of the power at port number 2 and port number 3 you will always find that the power ratio at port number 2 and port number 3 in the proportion 2 is to 3 okay so simple this is a simple wilkinson resistive power divider circuit and the same circuit can be used to also divide the power equally to divide the power equally means whenever we get the power at port number 2 and port number 3 both are equal and at that time the ratio becomes 1 so wilkinson power divider can also be used to divide the power equally as well as unequally okay so these are the few example that i would like to demonstrate you as the exercise for the model number two so in model number two we have saw in detail treatment for the different types of waveguides cavity resonators and passive junction based devices okay i hope uh, you understood some of the typical nature of the numerical examples which could be asked in the examination okay so with this couple of example i will stop over here and from our next lecture we will start with third module that is generation of the microwaves by using vacuum tubes okay thank you very much